Learning Plan 1 Infection Control. Hello everyone, welcome to Learning Plan 1 where we will be discussing infection control. Let me introduce myself first. My name is Rachel Zimmerman. I'm currently a full-time RN at Darlington Hospital where I've been for two years now. It is a critical access hospital which is um, requires us to float between both ER and med surge. We used to have OB, however that has closed in the past year. I initially started my healthcare journey as a CNA in 2009, and I also became a volunteer EMT just a few months later. And I absolutely love doing patient care, so I decided to go back to school and become a registered nurse. I became an LPN and then graduated with my ADN, and then I also received my BSN through the BSN at Home program through Oshkosh, UW Oshkosh. I truly love it. Um, my comfort is basically in med surge, however, an adrenaline rush in the ER time or two can be a lot of fun or scary, whatever you want to call it. Um, however, I learned so much from starting out as a CNA. In taking this course, you will become competent in basic nursing assistant skills. So this class will teach you about infection, vital signs, patient care, safe patient transfers, and so much more. It will also teach you about time management skills, something that you can take with you after being a CNA, and also um, it can teach you know, if you decide to go on to nursing school, it will help you so much. One thing that is consistent through healthcare is infection control. Infection control is a crucial topic to discuss because the spread, because the spread of microbes can lead to not only disease, but also death if untreated. Crazy enough, the best line of defense against infection is adequate hand hygiene. Who would have thought? In this learning plan, you will learn about infection, signs and symptoms of infection, measures to take to prevent infections, and how to apply standard precautions. Today's focus will mainly be on hand washing and a little bit about personal protective equipment, also known as PPE. As a nursing assistant, you will be required to wash your hands a specific way to prevent the spread of infection to not only yourself, but also to the patients. You will wash your hands whenever they are visibly soiled with dirt or body fluids, and also at specific times throughout the day. If your hands are not visibly soiled with dirt or body fluids, you may also be able to use an alcohol-based hand rub to decontaminate your hands. At Darlington, we have different um, brands that we use. We use Perel. We also have foam dispensers in each of the rooms. Sometimes those dispensers are not in the room based on precautions, such as something like C. diff, which causes you to have a loose stools that are pretty smelly, and it's pretty contagious, um, so you will have to wash your hands when dealing with these patients. Uh, each facility, you're just going to have to check and see what, what is allowed, what is required for you to use for hand wash or hand sanitizers as this. I have also attached a link in the printed syllabus on how to hand rub versus hand wash. So when do we wash our hands? When you come in for your shift, wash your hands. You don't want to bring infection from home to give to your patients. You want to wash your hands before and after any contact with your patients. Wash your hands before and after putting on gloves. A good time, a good habit, I should say, to get into is wash your hands when you enter a room. Whether or not you're going to put on gloves, whether or not you're going to touch anything, just get in the habit. Then you know you washed your hands and you don't have to worry about contaminating anything. It's just a really, really good habit to get into. Wash your hands after you use the bathroom. Mostly you already do, but something you're going to want to do, again, so you don't get an infection. Wash your hands after coughing, sneezing, blowing your nose. Wash your hands after you smoke. It's just like entering your shift. Wash your hands if you're dealing with dirty supplies or equipment or even before handling clean supplies or equipment so you don't contaminate these supplies. Wash your hands before handling food and definitely wash your hands before you go home for the day. You don't want to bring infection home to your family or friends. And any other time you may think it is important to wash your hands, wash them. When in doubt, wash your hands. It's not going to hurt. The following is a small video demonstration on how to wash your hands. We will take the time later in this class to wash our hands and practice the appropriate hand hygiene that is required for this class and check off. Again, remember hand washing protects both you and your patient from infection and disease.
wet hands with water, adjust the temperature until it is comfortably warm. Apply soap to your hands. At all times, keep your hands and wrists below the level of your elbows. You'll want to rub your hands together to create lather on all surfaces of wrists, hands, and fingers. And wash vigorously for at least 20 seconds, making sure you get the area between your fingers and underneath your fingernails. Then you'll want to rinse your hands under running water, keeping your hands lower than your elbows with fingers pointed down at all times. Dry hands thoroughly with a clean paper towel and ensure to discard this paper towel in appropriate waste container. You may use more than one paper if needed. When finished, you'll use an additional clean, dry paper towel to turn off the faucet. Then discard this paper towel in appropriate waste container. As a reminder, when washing your hands, wrists, and fingertips vigorously, make sure to have that lather going for a full 20 seconds. This 20 seconds is a major requirement for skills checkoff. One way to meet your 20 seconds is to sing happy birthday to yourself two times through. And don't rush, again, as this 20 seconds is a major requirement. A few other do's and don'ts for hand washing include, do keep your nails short and trim. Do not wear artificial nails or nail polish. This is a definite no-no. And artificial nails are even worse as bacteria builds up behind that. They're pretty gross if you actually think about it. Also, if you wear something like a watch or as I'm wearing a Fitbit, make sure to push that back when washing your hands or remove it. I know at the end of the day, I clean my Fitbit with alcohol wipes and it can get pretty gross. I don't want to bring that bacteria home to my family. Also, it's very important to keep your hands hydrated with lotion. They can get pretty dry from washing your hands often and even cracks can develop. I know in the winter, you'll notice it pretty bad, um, but that's another way to prevent infection towards yourself is to keep those hands nice and um, soft with lotion and hand hygiene. So we also wear gloves in addition to hand hygiene to help prevent infection. Gloves are worn whenever there's a possibility that you will come in contact with a person's blood or bodily fluids. Gloves should not only fit properly, but they also should be free of rips or tears. And also, it is important to wear gloves to protect yourself if you have any cuts or wounds on your hands, especially during the winter when our skin gets really dry from using those alcohol rubs or even washing your hands multiple times. So lotion's always a good idea any time of the year, but especially during the winter. One thing I want to stress is never, ever reuse gloves. If you drop them on the floor, if you've already used them and didn't think they were dirty, never, ever put those gloves back on. When in doubt, change your gloves and use hand hygiene. And also, you may need to change gloves several times, even during one procedure to avoid contamination. One of the most common procedures that I see where you have to change your gloves often is during perineal care. So when changing your gloves, you need to perform hand hygiene in between. A lot of times you'll just use hand rub um, or wash your hands depending on if they're soiled. So always provide hand hygiene before putting on that clean pair of gloves. So what are some examples of when we need to use gloves? We need to use gloves during mouth care, perineal care as we already talked about. So if you're changing someone's brief if it's soiled or just washing someone up for the day. You'll also want to wear gloves if someone has a wound and it's draining. Wear gloves when you're preparing food for a patient so you do not contaminate. And always, obviously, wash hands. And anytime you're cleaning up a dirty surface, whether it's a table or bedside table, commode, anything like that, make sure you're wearing gloves in addition to the appropriate cleaning agent. There's also many different times you might think of when you can wear gloves. Again, when in doubt, wear gloves and provide adequate hand hygiene. The following is the demonstration of how to apply and remove gloves. It's a little fast, so we will definitely take time to practice this skill in class as it is required as a check for this learning plan. When putting on gloves, be sure to choose the correct size and check gloves carefully for tears. Put the gloves on carefully and if wearing a protective gown, pull the gloves up over the gown cuffs. To remove gloves, you're going to want to peel off the first glove of the first hand and hold in gloved hand. Slide fingers of ungloved hand under remaining glove at wrist and peel off second glove over first glove. Discard and waste container. Wash hands.
The biggest reminder for putting on and taking off gloves is that you do not touch dirty to clean. If your hands or gloves get dirty or if you think by chance they may have been dirty, always, always change your gloves and wash hands when in doubt. Never hurts to do it more often than not. Some additional personal protective equipment or PPE that you will learn about in this lesson plan, but again more about it at a later time as we are running out of time, is the use of gown, personal eye protection, and or a mask. This equipment further protects you as a nursing assistant against the spread of infection based on which type of precaution may be ordered. Different precautions that we'll learn about are airborne, droplet, and contact. Some of the types of PPE that may be ordered um, are a few of the following. Most often, as we have already learned about, is the gloves. That is going to be for standard precautions or contact precautions. You'll see that. And then second to gloves, you'll see the yellow isolation gowns. At least that's what we use in Darlington. I know some places in the past, uh, one of the nursing homes that I worked at, we use reusable. So those were just washed in our facility as well. You may also see or be ordered to wear a mask. A lot of times this is for droplet precautions where blood might be splashed at you or it might be um, something like influenza where it could be transferred um, via droplet. And if someone coughs, you might have to wear this so you don't get the infection. Also with body fluids that might splash, you want to wear eye protective equipment. And again, like I said, we'll learn a lot more about this in the future, but today we're kind of running out of time. So I just wanted to give you a brief summary of what some of the PPE that we will use other than gloves. So now that we've reviewed a little bit about hand hygiene and personal protective equipment, also known as PPE, let's summarize. So what did we learn? We learned that when washing your hands, you need to wash your hands vigorously with soap for 20 seconds. So sing happy birthday to yourself twice and don't do it too fast because I want you to pass your skill. Also, anytime you're dirty, wash your hands. You need to wash your hands sometimes even if you don't think you're dirty. When you come to work, when you go home from work, before you eat, after you use the bathroom, uh, those are all good times to wash your hands. The best advice that I can give you is wash your hands when you enter a room. You never remember if you touch something dirty before you enter the room. Did you wash your hands in the last room? Best advice, wash your hands anytime you enter a room. Then there's no question whether or not your hands are clean or dirty. They're clean. Whether or not you're going to touch something, just wash your hands. Also, we learned when to wear gloves. So, when do we wear gloves? For sure, anytime you're going to touch any bodily fluids or get them dirty, and make sure you wash your hands before and after. Sometimes you're going to have to wash your hands multiple times during a procedure and apply more than one pair of gloves. The most prime example is anytime you change a depend, and that's something state definitely looks at. So make sure you get in good practice when, when looking at clean and dirty. It is something you will have to work on. Uh, one little Jeopardy question for you. If you have a cut or open sore on your hand, what must you do to protect yourself from infection? A. Avoid providing care for people with infections. B. Stay away from work until your wounds are healed. C. Wear gloves while providing care. Or D. Handle only clean items. The answer is C, wear gloves while providing care. And another tip, always apply that lotion to keep your hands nice and smooth and prevent those cracks. You want to prevent the spread of infection. One of the most important ways to break the chain of infection is to wash your hands. Good luck on your skills and we'll practice later.